Okay, I know how risky this video is and how stupid it is to make it, but I think the topic itself is still an interesting and important subject to talk about. And who better than the one that experienced its repercussions firsthand, huh? Anyway, the concept of reincarnations and past lives has become a core part of the VTubing culture. In fact, it always has. For the VTubers that don't like it, it's an occupational hazard. A risk that, whether you like it or not, you will automatically take whenever you join a big or small corpo. For the VTubers that do like it or don't really care about it, the concept is insurance. A guarantee that your fans will find you in your other accounts and can monetize yourself there so you can earn a bit of money on the side without the agency taking a cut. That is if their contract doesn't have an exclusivity clause. For the fans, it's either a subject you're very much curious about because you'd like to see more of your favorite VTubers, some just want to find dirt, and others absolutely hate the idea and the concept in any and all circumstances. But first, to those unaware, what is the concept of past life or alters or roommates in the first place? A VTuber's past life is the content creator who the VTuber used to be back before they became who they are now. The VTuber industry has made it so that when you're a VTuber, you play a character and put on a kayfabe. This makes the idea of finding out the person behind that character really interesting. But at the same time, this made it taboo. To keep up with the character and maintain the illusion and to not have information that the VTubers don't want to be out there. Past life accounts and content are suggested to be privated for all sorts of reasons. Either for privacy reasons or exclusivity clauses or other contractual concerns. Or to just help with the kayfabe. But usually, it's for tradition. Even when a lot of VTubers don't really have a good reason to private or become inactive in their PL accounts, they still kinda do it because it's the standard here in the industry. But how and where that standard originated from is something of a mystery in of itself, with the closest most ancient reason being to keep up the immersion. People just universally agreed to be all hush-hush about this kind of topic and any discussion around it. At least, those in the mainstream media like Twitter or YouTube or Twitch. Because everywhere else, it's pretty much fair game. That was the case for a long time, with really only 4chan or underground communities of the industry being the ones to openly talk about it. However, in recent times, the taboo is kinda… disappearing, I guess it's shifting. With the advent of V-Shoujo and their recent adoptions with obvious and well-known figures, people just started being okay discussing about PLs in the EN circles, even in places like Twitter and YouTube. They just started being okay. The concept of VTuber face reveals have also become something of a trend, with many big VTubers openly showing their faces and public appearance all over their social media without really batting an eye. To many traditionalists, they don't like this. To everyone else, they don't really care or actually do like it. Especially if they find out that the VTuber they like happens to be as cute or beautiful or handsome as the fans pictured them to be. Again, the past life thing is fundamentally a Japanese traditional VTuber concept. The Japanese consume their VTubers purely as a person in character, kayfabe to be maintained, an anime girl or anime guy brought to life that you can interact with. But as the EN side of the community matures and evolves and starts growing its own culture, a lot of them have started to not really give a shit about kayfabe or some traditional unspoken rules. It poses the question of whether or not the concept of past lives no longer hold any sort of sanctity to the general public eventually, and whether that's a good or a bad thing. Again, that shift is already happening now, and I'm quite unsure how or to what extent this is gonna go in the future. People aren't even being tongue-in-cheek about it anymore, like they used to be. People just outright drop the altars of whoever the VTubers were in public and mainstream places. These days, the new rule seems to just not talk about PLs in the area that the VTuber might normally frequent or the VTuber's platform itself. Their Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. Yeah, they know that everybody knows, just don't be weird about it kind of thing. While, of course, a lot of VTubers out there want their PLs to remain buried, a lot of them also don't give a shit. Or in fact, would want you to find their PLs or next incarnation. Actually, that's pretty much the reason why a lot of small corpo VTubers get graduated or terminated, because they funnel fans into their next avatar. Ultimately, there's a pro and cons to unveiling one's past life, both for the VTubers and the fans. Pros and cons that I'll be explaining now. As a fan, knowing your Oshi's past life can give you a deeper appreciation for the VTubers that you like. It fosters a deeper, more personal connection with your favorite VTubers adds context to a lot of their behaviors and actions, lets you know an entire side and story to them that they can't exactly show. Knowing your Oshi's past life can genuinely elevate your experience as a VTuber fan, if you care about your Oshis that much anyway. You would understand them better, learn to appreciate them deeper, all those kinds of things. 
for VTubers, they can enjoy the fact that if they graduate, a portion of their fans will always support them in their next lives. It's basically insurance in case something bad happens. You're always going to be guaranteed supporters regardless of your scale, especially if you are in a corpo, small or otherwise. But this pro also applies to fans because a VTuber's career is something of a revolving door. Your favorite VTubers right now will eventually graduate, but that won't necessarily mean that they'll disappear entirely. If your favorite VTubers graduate or become inactive, you will easily find them again. If they are a corpo VTuber who will join another agency or become indie, you're bound to bump into them eventually, one way or another. Hell, even if they turn to other career paths like a pop star or an actor or a voice actor. I mean, if a big corpo agency or a darling of a small corpo gets graduated these days, all you have to do is wait for the next V Shoujo announcement a couple months later. For indies who will join a corpo, well then, you just got yourself a very interesting story for future fans to eventually find out. Fans that will be more than willing to support you now wherever you go, even if you do return to your old persona eventually. Cons. Well, the most obvious con is the privacy concerns, especially if you did not hide information well enough. Information that you're not comfortable letting the world know. Although, a loophole here is when the VTuber has done some really fucked up shit before and hopes to bury all of that in the past without facing the consequences. This opens up another conversation entirely around whether or not a VTuber should be responsible for the sins of their past lives. Because a lot of VTubers actually do have some relatively bad past that they are looking to get away from. That's not necessarily bad. If the past involves personal regrets and trauma and content you are very much burnt out or unhappy of, reincarnating allows you to be free from that. A second chance to redo everything and shape your experience to be better this time around. But if that past involves stuff like grooming and being a general douche or other forms of morally bankrupt behavior, that's when this conversation becomes interesting. But hey, that's a conversation we'll have another time. In any case, this con more so applies to VTubers who might have overshared to their fanbase or did content that they aren't exactly proud of. Or if they have skeletons in their closets that's actually grounds for the internet mob to burn them at the stake. But for many content creators who doesn't have much to reveal, like you've never published sensitive information that's out there, this con doesn't really apply to you. In fact, you'd be reaping some fat fucking rewards. The other con for the VTuber is that basically, fans will still expect and want you to be the VTuber they once liked. Which is actually a bit disheartening for a lot of VTubers, I imagine. It's not exactly pleasant for Kason that a lot of previous fans say that Karyu Coco was much entertaining than her, or that Henya isn't the same anymore, or whoever isn't whatever they used to be. Sometimes, VTubers redebut under a new name to live out a new life or for personal reasons that their fans may disagree with. It could be the volatility of their own fan base. Burnout of their own content, maybe they've pigeonholed themselves into doing things they may not be comfortable doing anymore. And they can't escape that label. Sometimes, when such VTubers re-debut, a few old fans will not be nice about it, and that's gonna ruin anyone's day, I imagine. At the end of the day, different people have different takes about past lives. There's a camp where they are okay with it as long as it's in the appropriate place and you don't share actual sensitive information like addresses and phone numbers among other things. Some people who think it's a universally bad thing no matter the circumstances and will not think otherwise. But me personally, I am in the former camp. I think studying these kinds of stories and analyzing this culture in the industry is a valuable thing to do if you'd like to study and consume VTubers as a culture, and not just for entertainment and escapism. It's good for analyzing why certain trends work, how a VTuber became who they are. Generally, it's good to study the industry. From what I've seen, most people that are very much open about PLs don't really give a shit. It's just one piece of interesting information lodged in their brain and nothing else. More often than not, it doesn't really detract from their experience of that VTuber. In fact, again, it heightens the experience. I suppose people are just going to have to balance the intellectual discussions around past lives to ensure that they don't go overboard with their digging, or talk about it in the appropriate platform. Me personally, a lot of people misconstrue the discussion of these types of topics as doxing here in the VTuber industry. But I think there has to be a distinction made between talking about a VTuber's past life versus dropping sensitive and identifiable information of them. However, I do recognize that that can often turn out to be a slippery slope. Because unfortunately, some of those sensitive information can be found from their past lives if the VTuber slipped up before, with some people finding that kind of information accidentally or without really even trying. At the end of the day, there's a reason why this is such a sensitive and contentious topic. 
The concept is one that has some harmful consequences to both traditionalists and non-traditionalist crowds, whether they're fans or VTubers themselves. And the rewards aren't consistent for the VTubers too, only given on a case-by-case -case basis, on whether or not the VTubers themselves would like to have fans follow them in their other accounts, or if they've done some bad shit before, or if they've privated enough of their personal and sensitive information. There's not much a fan can get by talking about past lives aside from the pro that I talked about earlier. And that it's inherently interesting and curious, and I guess that's why a lot of people don't like them. Many people would argue that if there's not much to gain for people to talk about it, and more often than not will actually have some consequences for the VTuber, then why talk about it at all? In any case, that's this video for the topic of past lives. I hope it's an interesting food for thought to get your gears up in your brain going. I'd like to know what you think, so leave a comment down below. But yeah, that's really about it. See ya.